Hi everyone, this is Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to go over how to get started with modeling this 3D acoustic guitar model in Cinema 4D. So if we take a look at my Cinema 4D file I have set up for this model, I have a camera, a light, and this guitar model, and we'll just take a look quickly at what we'll be modeling. Now we'll keep this at pretty low poly and get the general idea of a guitar, and you could always go in and add a lot more details. So to get started, I'm just going to delete all of my guitar assets, and I'll just do delete. And I just have a camera and two basic lights with shadows on them so that we can see what we're doing and nothing else beyond that to get started. So to get started with this, I'm going to go into my multiple views and in my front panel, I wanna drop an image of a guitar I have into the background to use as a reference. So I'm gonna click in this viewport, press option V to get my viewport options. And then I'm gonna click at the top and that's gonna allow me to drop in an image so I can click here. And I have a picture of a guitar from the front side and back. And this is a good type of image to have as a reference for 3D modeling because it'll give you a lot of information on all sides of the model. So I'm gonna press okay, and that's gonna drop it into my front view in the background. And what I can do is turn the transparency up to get it a little more transparent so I can see what I'm doing as well as offset it. So what I'm gonna do is just move it over to the top and center of my scene so that I have it sitting on the ground in the middle and centered in the middle. And that'll be a good place for me to get started. So what I'm gonna do is build this in parts as you would this sort of guitar. And to get started, I'm gonna focus on the front and the edges. So I'm going to grab my Bezier pen tool up here and I'm gonna draw out half of this. So what I'm gonna do to get started is grab my Bezier spline tool from up here. And it's gonna draw out half of this by clicking and then clicking and holding to get a curve and I'm just gonna draw out close to this curve as much as I can, knowing that I can adjust that in a second. So I'm gonna draw out to the bottom and then close spline. And if I wanna adjust these further, I can get onto the move tool and go to model mode and then click points again. And I could move these as well as grab these handles to adjust this a little further. And additionally, hold shift if I wanna adjust one side of the handle so I can get this a little closer. So. Once I have that, what I want to do is make a duplicate of this and combine it so it's symmetrical. So I'm going to grab this and up in my window here, hold command and drag up to make a copy and then press R to rotate. And I'm going to flip this around 180 degrees, holding shift and just move that into place. And that gives me the whole shape. What I need to do to make it one solid shape is up here, go to my spline mask. And then I'm going to drop both of these into here. And you can see that that's gonna make them one solid object, which is good. And then all I need to do to make them combine is press C to make it editable. And that's gonna drop it down to one spline. And that's gonna be mainly what I'm gonna use and reuse it for a couple different instances. So to get some depth on this, what I need to do is I'm gonna drop in an extrude object from up here and I'm gonna put the spline mask as a child of that. And that's gonna give it some depth. And I wanna create three sections of this so on the extrude, I'm going to make one that is six and then go to caps and give it fillet cap, fillet cap, and I'll have steps be two and radius only one on both. And that's gonna give me my front plate of my guitar and I'm gonna change it to quadrangles under type just because it's a good habit. So I'll get, that'll be my front and I'm gonna duplicate that whole extrude by holding command and dragging up. And then I can pull this back and that'll be my back and what I wanna do is create a hollow center for this. So I'll make another copy by dragging up and I'll pull this one in the center and I'm just gonna grab that extrude and bring it to the top and I'll turn off the other ones so I can take a look just at this one. And what I wanna do is actually turn off all the caps. So I just get this edge and then I can turn back on the other ones and the center one I'm just gonna push into place and I'll go to object and put it at something like 40 centimeters and drag it into place by looking at my top view. And then I'll grab the back one and put that into place. And I can just call these back, middle, and front and just slide them more precisely into place so they're just about touching but not intersecting. 
And that's gonna be my three main plates for the guitar. And if I do a quick Command R, we can see that we'll get some nice detail in here. We could make that tighter or smaller depending on how we want it to look like it was manufactured. Now we need to cut out this hole in the front part of it. So how we're gonna do that is grabbing a cylinder from up here in my tools. And then in my front view, I'm gonna hold R and rotate that into place 90 degrees. And then I can press E to just move it up. And I'm gonna use this to cut out this shape as a bool. So I'll just press T to scale it down so it's more closer to that shape. And then in my top view, I just need to intersect that front plate only. And what we're gonna do is cut that out with our bool tool up here. I'll go to bool. And then I'm gonna drag that and the front into it. And that's gonna cut out only my front plate. So now if I do a quick command R, we can see that we're cutting into that and it's hollowed out. And that is good because that's how we would want this to look. So we can use the same technique for our arm of this. I'm just going to grab my bezier spline again, and I'm just gonna zoom in my front view and I'll make a point at the bottom, and then we'll click and make additional points as this arm goes up, knowing we can use the same techniques to adjust it in a second, and just quickly draw out the main part of our arm shape and just click and hold, and I'll pull down here, and I want it to not intersect that hole, but just go slightly above it and draw that point and I'll draw another one pretty close and then I can close that spline and same idea I can go to model mode and then back to point mode and go up here to these points and just make a little bit of further adjustments so they're a little tighter and it's a little more accurate for what we want. Now since we already made an extrude object we can save some time here by just grabbing this front extrude and I'll command and drag that into a copy and then I'm going to delete that spline and just drop this one in as a child and that's going to extrude with the same properties on this spline and then I'm going to constrain this one so it doesn't grow any further out. Now if we look at our reference photo that I have here the arm goes up and bends back and so we need to address that. We could do that a couple ways but how I'm going to do this is on my front view I'll just pull this whole extrude into place and then I'm just gonna get a really tight bend on this arm. So I'm going to go into my deformers menu and grab a bend object. And then I'll just make that a child of this spline. And what I wanna do is just move the bend up into place. And if we start editing that down here with our bend properties, if I did a straight, it's just gonna twist this. So what I wanna do is move this into place rotate it at the correct angle so it's going to bend backwards. So if I click the bend again, we get this. And then I'm just gonna scale this really small so it's only gonna bend on this exact angle. And we could do this a couple different ways, but this is a fun and quick way to do it. So then if I turn up the bend strength here, now I can just keep scaling this down until it's only bending on those edges there. So then if we look at that from our right view, we get this arm connecting to the front and then this top bending back. And we could continue to add more details if we wanted to, to make this more and more accurate. Now we have the same idea with this bottom plate, so we could do the same sort of thing minus the bend. So I'm just going to repeat that process. So I'm just gonna draw a shape around this bottom plate here and just mimic this as close as I want to. Close that spline and same idea, since I already have this front one, I can duplicate this and then just delete the spline, drop this one into place, and then we have our bottom plate and we just need to move it out of here. And it looks like the axis point is moved, which is fine because there's this menu I like to have up all the time. If you go to mesh, axis, center, axis, center, it's this little menu. And what we can do is turn on include all children and objects and execute. And then it's gonna snap that arrow tool back to where it should be in the center. And then I'm just gonna push this out a bit and I can look in my side view and match these up. Now to draw the strings and get started in a little more detail, we're gonna use a little bit of a different method. I'm gonna still draw a bezier curve. So I'm just gonna start with this first string and I can press option D if I wanna hide my arrows, which is a nice little tip. And then I'm just gonna draw this first string and twirl it around to where it would be connecting to this top part. And then to get that to be this string chord look, I'm going to use a circle and a sweep. So I'm gonna click and hold the circle 
and then I'm gonna grab a sweep from these objects up here and then I'm gonna put both in there and it's gonna look really huge but what I can do is grab the circle and press T and just scale that down and what it's gonna do is draw this circle around that path so we can just keep scaling it down until it looks like it's the correct size of a string which would be a pretty small little circle and if we do a quick render we can see that it's getting close and we just need to make some adjustments so that'll get us our first string and we're going to have to move this into place as well as deal with the bend in the same way but we have already have a bend so that's going to help save us some time so i have my first string and the idea being that it would connect to this bottom area so we can just line that up so that the string is in front of it and we can connect it to another little object and then we can see it's coming up here and then going completely straight what we can do is grab this bend from our arm and just hold command to duplicate it and then drag it into this spline and it's going to make a copy at exactly that same point and then we could just make a little bit of adjustments from there to scale it down and move it up a bit so it's not quite pulling this off of the arm and then we can see that this is falling nicely into place so it can look like it's wrapped up so to make the additional strings we can just repeat that process and i'm just going to grab again a bezier curve and draw out the second string to where it's going to pull through go to model mode draw out the third string so i'll just click click and then drag to make that one and just repeat this process till we get six so click click drag to the fourth string and then go back down and then I'll draw the fifth string and we could always get more precise about this but we can also make adjustments later if we need to and then finally the last string on the end here we're just gonna draw that one out towards the edge same idea that one could wrap around these little cylinders and then we have all of our strings and what's nice about all these parent child objects is we can just duplicate it and swap everything out and just make minor adjustments so you can see we have all of our strings but if we rendered they don't actually show up as anything yet and I'm just going to go to my display and just go to shading and what I'm going to do is take this sweep which is a string so I'll just call it string and just make five copies of the whole thing so I'm going to hold command and make one two three four five copies and all i need is a circle so i'm just going to in all of those copies delete the spline only if i holding command and selecting all of those and then i have five strings with just the circle and then i can just go down the list and drag each spline into each sweep for the container and looks like i was one short but that's fine i'll just make another copy delete that and swap that out and then we have all of our strings all we need to do now is just select all of them that are these new ones move them into place by the other ones and then you can see the strings are just pointing up so all we need to do is make six copies of this bend and put it in the right place so again i'm just going to hold command and drag up and make sure i'm getting the down arrow on each of these splines and just put it as a child of that spline so it's going to snap that line to the correct position and they're all going to match up and follow along so if we zoom out here you can see that they're all consistent but that's not how guitar chords are but again what's nice is because all of this is still editable so for these strings all we need to do is go down the list and make them each smaller so this sixth one will go really small and all I need to do is grab the circles and scale those down and get as accurate as I want to so it looks real and believable and so it doesn't seem like they're all the same size and if I zoom out here you can see that we're getting there we're definitely on the way with our model if we do a render we're getting our base and our chord set up and you could keep going with this you could add even more detail using these techniques you could put on the little knobs and all the little parts to tune the guitar and if you figured it was really close you would get really detailed but this is a good start to making this model and you could just continue these techniques by doing extrusions sweeps bends deformers and things like that and fill out the rest of this model and how far you want to go is up to you on how detailed you want it to be this has been Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com teaching you how to get started with making this 3D model of an acoustic guitar. 
Be sure to stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on premiumbeat.com for more tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other animation and video applications. And if you want to get an idea of more of what I do, you can always check out seanfrangella.com and youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all the premiumbeat.com channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation and video tutorials. And I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.